Oh, f there it is. Why'd you make me do this? Hi there, I'm Aria, and today I received some wine in the mail. So I'm not actually excited specifically about the wine because I really uh, don't know anything about wine. However, this wine has a very peculiar history, which I'm intrigued by. Let's give it a little sip first, huh? That's wine. What I find particularly interesting about this wine is that it is in fact produced by the Fellowship of Friends, a religious group which, according to the LA Times and the San Francisco Chronicle, has been called a cult by ex-members. The Fellowship of Friends' most successful venture, however, is the Renaissance Vineyard and Winery, which produced some of the best wines to come out of California until it shut down in 2015. In the 1990s, Gideon Beinstock was the winemaker and produced some of the most legendary and extraordinarily long-lived wines. The wines have been served to US presidents and respected by wine experts. So I find this quite interesting that something that could be quite revered can also have a potentially sordid past. So while I may not know too much about wine myself, I do have some friends around the office that I'd like to share some of this wine with, as well as perhaps some historical tidbits about this religious group. I got a gift here for you. I love wine. Are you a wine drinker? No. Cool. Should I say that I am? Damn, dude. I love wine. I drink a lot of red wine. Bordeaux. Uh, I like cabs as well. There's some sort of a catch here. You're gonna read me wine facts. Obviously, we're sharing the glass. Oh. Heavy core. Oh. Whoa. 2012 Reserve Renaissance Cabernet Sauvignon. Has everyone felt like this is a prank? Yeah, I don't know why. Uh, because it's you? How's it smell? Like wine. Just a little taste test, you know? We don't have to go crazy. I feel like I'm gonna be so mad after I taste this. You actually mad. We have to work together again. Oh, I was a little nervous, and now I am definitely more excited because I love wine. Do you like wine, George, normally? I do. A little watery. Smells good. I don't know why I'm nervous. <laughs> I feel like this is a mistake. I shouldn't agree to videos that Arya makes. It's good. You're making me nervous, Arya. <laughs> Tastes just like church wine. Bland? This is gonna be something where it's like, no, 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 no. Whoever made this is like bad or something. It doesn't have a distinct flavor. It has no real taste. It's just wine and not even good wine. I just kind of mostly taste grapes, so I'm not tasting like any wood or any. You're trying to taste wood when you drink wine? Well, actually, I'm gonna read some facts about it. <laughs> this is now touched my mouth. So, oh, is this one of those videos? So the wine was, in fact, produced by the Fellowship of Friends, a religious group. I knew group, it. Which, according to the San Francisco Chronicle and the LA Times, has been yeah. called a cult by ex -members. I knew it. Yikes. Okay, tell me about the friends. I'm trying to divorce it from it mattering that I drank this wine, because I didn't pay for the wine. Can't say I'm surprised. <laughs> it's good though. <laughs> you know what, this one's on me, because I knew it. The Fellowship of Friends was founded by Robert Earl Burton in 1970 in the San Francisco Bay Area. According to the organization's official website, from its inception, the vision of the fellowship was and remains to establish a practical spiritual organization and to make it available to anyone interested in pursuing the spiritual work of awakening. Fellowship of Friends, it sounds friendly. It sounds like- We're a there. Fellowship of Friends. Great club name. They usually find a source of income, so at least they're making great wines for presidents. Spiritual work of awakening is something that I would put as a description of an alleged cult. We love awakening. We Some love matrix stuff. opening the third eye. We love breaking the matrix. We love the simulation. So yeah, I don't like the vagueness of it. There's a lot of vague language in that. Mm -hmm. It's just like, come for the awakening. It doesn't specify which religion. It doesn't specify what kind of deity they might believe in. The vagueness means they're hiding something. So I'm just waiting for you to tell me that they like touched people or something. According to the SF Chronicle, Burton was believed to have been visited by angelic incarnations of Walt Whitman and Leonardo. Leonardo da Vinci. He has also predicted or prophesized a number of cultural and natural disasters, including an economic collapse in 1984, the destruction of California in 1998, an Armageddon in 2006, and some kind of other disaster in 2018. He prophesied that these things were gonna happen. He was wrong about all, and he thought he was making good wine, and he was wrong about that too. I wonder what they put in the wine. Yeah. I wonder if I'm gonna start seeing ghosts after drinking this. Uh, at least we'll get a reason to take a nap. This is a tale as old as time. A guy believes grandiose thoughts about himself, ropes some people in, sells a single product to fund it. It's hard because, you know, I grew up in a church. There would be a lot of pastors who prophesied the future, and like, they would be wrong. I don't think they'd fool me, unless it was like a winery. Spiritual awakening, Leonardo da Vinci was like, Ayo, Joyce, what's up? I'd be like, yo, dude, I love your art. A 1996 LA Times article reports that membership once exceeded 2,500, but today the fellowship has only around 500 members. 
That's a lot of people. They still have members. That's a big drop. Is Gideon okay? Is he still doing it? Is he dead? No, Robert Albert is still alive. Oh my God. This same article claims that the organization expects members to pay 10% of their income for membership fees. There you go. The 10%? Money. Yeah, I can't afford that. Which is probably not a lot of money anyway. The 10% of your income thing's a lot. I mean, there's pay to play on basically everything. Like you can't even go to the gym without paying like a membership fee. So it's like, if you're gonna be with a fellowship of friends, they got wine to make. I mean, I'm probably giving 10% in rent, right? So a group that I won't name tried to get me to pay to be in like their classes or whatever. And I was just like, if it's not free, it's not for me. Now that I kind of think about all the things that I use my money for, they kind of get all that for free, right? I help make the wine. I'll put on my sandals and I'll stomp in the grapes and junk. But to give 10% of my income? I mean, dang, I got hoes to feed. In 1996, the LA Times also reported that some behavior of Burton's was exceedingly controlling, such as telling members to stop wearing eyeglasses and compelling them to wear contacts instead. He also told married couples to wait for five years before having children. And for a while, women were forced to wear skirts only. According to this same article, Burton claimed to be celibate, saving his sexual energy for the good of his flock. Well, oh, there it is. Why'd you make me do this? Not good at all. I put down the wine glass at this point in the video. What do you do? I feel awful about drinking this wine. How do you take a shower on the inside of your body? And I will no longer be holding this wine. Wearing glasses thing is weird. It really stands out. He wants to see those eyes. Nah. Daddy keeps those eyes in the, the casing. Mm -hmm. Five years after getting married. Want to make sure you enjoy the relationship. You don't want to bring kids into the mix. I just said it wasn't that good before. Saving his sexual energy for the good of the flock. But I can't imagine it's anything good. My final thoughts, I hate this and I hate you and I hate the world that we live in. We did reach out and we asked the Fellowship of Friends to comment on these allegations from former members as well as their business interests and they did not respond. This was enlightening, I really think it was, because you can get something now in the world so quickly, it brings about a, a very good question of do you ever really know where something is coming from? You want any more of that? Nah, baby, you keep the glass. All right. I'm good. I'm not gonna finish the wine, even though it's good. Seems like he got drunk with power. He should've just drank his own wine. On a larger scale, I guess the question is if we take this as a very extreme example, but do we ever actually truly know exactly where the goods we purchase come from? Until then, I will just press my own juice, I guess. I'm definitely not drinking any more of this wine though. And also, I'm, I've been six months sober and this is me up. Oh, <laughs> no, no, <could> you? <laughs> <laughs>